Okay. Chris Putnam, thank you so much. Appreciate your time. How would you characterize your race against Congresswoman Kay Granger? Yeah, Jack. So the, the Texas 12th Congressional District is deeply politically and socially conservative. And Republican voters in that district right now, what they, what they want from a representative in Washington, D.C. is an authentic and unapologetic conservative fighter. They've had 24 years of, you know, what is by any standard, you know, moderate to liberal Republican representation. And so that's why folks are incredibly excited, because this is the first time that there's been a, le a legitimate alternative for them to vote for. A lot of firepower on the airwaves. Every minute you look, there's another ad in this race, whether it's yours or Congresswoman Kay Granger's. Why so much back and forth? Yeah, I'm actually told that outside of the, the Democratic presidential primary, it's the, it's the biggest race in the country, the biggest uh, GOP primary race in the country, of course. Um, you know, we had a, we, on our side, you know, we had a well thought out plan, you know, for, for how to do this. And, you know, it involved a, you know, a number of partners. And so th there's a tremendous amount of money obviously being spent in the race um, on both sides. And um, it's captured a lot of folks' attention, you know, again, just because I think of her seniority and again, the dynamic that I explained previously, I mean, because the contrast in, you know, in the types of the candidate profiles just couldn't be much different. Well, what do you see as the main issues in this race? Well, there's, a, there's actually several. I, I actually originally got in the race, you know, after having some conversations with a lot of the senior folks in the law enforcement community. And it's, it's well known that, for example, um, the Tarrant County Sheriff Bill Weyburn, along with Wise County Sheriff Lane Aiken, have endorsed our candidacy very publicly. And the reason they've done that is because the, the law enforcement community is just really having a hard time, you know, d dealing with the impacts of th the immigration issues um, particularly the human trafficking as well as drug trafficking in, in just right here in our communities in North Texas. And they were very unhappy about the fact that Congress has, you know, not done anything to, to substantively reform immigration. And of course, four years ago, or at the start of the, at the, of the president's term, we had both houses of Congress in the White House, and Congress and Ms. Granger did absolutely nothing. And then during the government shutdown, of course, uh, Ms. Granger had a a, a principal role actually negotiating that deal with Ms. Pelosi over the border wall funding and came away with very, very little, which is, of course, why the president then ultimately had to go declare a national emergency and, and start to source um, some of that revenue for, for building the wall from the military. So they were very, very, very unhappy. And we're, we're looking for an alternative. I mean, their endorsements are basically saying to Washington and, and to Congress, look, you guys didn't get it done. You didn't get it done, and, 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 and you really kind of created the crisis that we have today through your inaction. So we're sending this guy up there to get it done. And, and I'm going to work very closely um, with Sheriff Weber, who you may know has become one of the leading national voices on this issue in D.C. And, and we're going to go bang the table and, and try to get substantive reform done so we can fix the problem. The fact that President Trump endorsed Congresswoman Granger, doesn't that hurt your your campaign a little bit? It hasn't at all. In fact, um, I think most people will understand very clearly that was the politics of impeachment. He needed every single House vote. Um, and in fact, you know, when you look at the recent record in terms of, you know, what's happened here from a funding point of view and, and Ms. Granger's complicated, you know, relationship with the administration, we've, we're losing funding left and right. We, we, the, the Panther Island funding, which I hope we get to talk about, um, for her, you know, and her, her and her son's real estate scheme was cut by the government, for, or cut by the Trump administration specifically, for the third year in a row. And just last week, really interesting news that they're going to divert F-35, right, you know, a, a, an aircraft that's manufactured right here in our area. They're going to they're going to divert that budget now to pay for the wall that she didn't get funded four years ago. So we, they're, they're, this her relationship with the administration is very complicated. Um, it's also well known that three weeks before the general election in 2016, she very publicly called for the president to step down and withdraw himself from consideration for the presidency. And then she's had a, a she, she would have preferred a Hillary Clinton presidency to, to President Trump. And so she's been in this area for 24 years. People know that she is not a, she, she is not a supporter of the Trump agenda. She hasn't been a supporter of the president until the last seven weeks when, you know, when it became a requirement for her to, in order to maintain her, you know, or run, run for a 13th term. So you're saying it's basically the politics of convenience. The politics of impeachment for her, the politics of convenience, absolutely. Let me ask you, because pro-life, her pro-life record has come under scrutiny. You've criticized it. 
Um, she said earlier at a news conference this week that she was uh, pro-choice years ago and she changed her mind. Uh, what's wrong with that? Well, nothing's wrong with it. I mean, I'm, I'm, I hope she has had a conversion. I just think this one's awfully convenient in the middle of a primary race. <laughs> you know, and again, her, she, her public statements are, are out there. Anybody can see them. Um, there's a very famous interview where she, the, the interviewer assumed she was pro-life and she banged the table to stop and basically said, no, wait, 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 you got me all wrong. I'm a pro-choice Republican. I believe in a woman's right to choose. And so, and, and then look, the, for, for legislators, the proof is really in the pudding, right? And so in this case, she, again, she has a, a senior role in appropriations and we're still sending $600 million of taxpayer money a year to Planned Parenthood. And she's the one that's, the, that's passing those budgets. And then there's a, there's a bill currently in, in the House that most pro-life folks know about called the Heartbeat Protection Act. And um, there's 97 Republicans, House Republicans, that are enjoined to that bill as co-sponsors, but not Ms. Granger. So, you know, to, again, I hope she has had a conversion, but her record doesn't suggest in any way that she's pro-life. Well, she did have three groups, uh, Right to Life groups, endorse her uh, earlier this week. Well, as, you, as you know, politics of D.C., right? I mean, there's a lot of D.C. Well, lobbyists are, that, pro that protect here. income. No, Texas Right to Life endorsed us, actually. Um, she mistakenly said that publicly, that she had that endorsement, and they've since corrected the record. But there were three groups that, that did endorse her, and one of the things that they had mentioned at the news conference that they credited her, her with was even though the House is now under Democratic control, that there hasn't been an increase in spending on abortions. What's your thought about that? Well, there's been an increase in spending to Planned Parenthood. And, and again, you know, I would, what I would ask folks is go check the public record. Go check her own public statements. It's not, it's not my responsibility to interpret her public statements that declaring herself publicly pro-choice. That's up to her. And again, the, the, the day that we aren't sending any federal taxpayer money to Planned Parenthood, then, okay, then, then maybe I'll start to, to, to believe in some of these recent conversions. If you are to win the primary and go on to win the general election, what are your top three priorities? Border security, immigration reform, as I mentioned, this uh, Heartbeat Protection Act, we'll enjoy that as a co-sponsor on day one. It'll be the very first thing that we can do. And then I, you, I, I'm going to have a tremendous focus on getting big government under control. And again, this is an area where the record is really clear. We've only had a few terms in the 24 years that Ms. Granger's been in Congress where you know, we did not actually have a Republican majority in the House. And we've had several trifectas during that period. And in that period of time, and of course she's had a leading role in, in appropriations. And in that period of time, um, we have literally tripled the size of the federal government. We tripled the federal budget. And the national debt is five times higher at a reckless and irresponsible $23 trillion and we're running one trillion dollar budget uh, deficits annually, and they're projected to do that, you know, for like the next decade. And so, I, you know, I just I believe we have to get big government under control, and we have to reduce start to reduce the size of the federal government, um, the, the scope of the federal government, and the influence of the federal government, and return legislative power to the states. I, I have this theory that we have this horrible polarization in our society. Right? It's terrible. Nobody likes it but it's caused by the fact that we've allowed the federal government to get too big and to do too many things and be too influential to all of us. And so what happens is if you're a Democrat and you're living under a Republican administration, you feel oppressed by it like they do right now. And if you're a Republican and you're living, in a, and you're living under a Democratic administration like we just did under eight years of Obama, we feel oppressed by it because the system was never designed to work that way. The founding fathers wanted this to be a decentralized system, not a centralized system of government. And so it's going to take people that are not career politicians, that come from you know, different backgrounds like myself with a business background, to go up there and just think about the problem a different way and start to you know, dig a foot in the ground and say, look, we're doing too much and we need to stop this spending insanity. Um, and we, we need to pick and choose the things that we do. We need to start to look at budgets very differently. So you would slash spending. And do you support a balanced budget amendment? I absolutely do support a balanced budget. And I also support term limits. Um, I think those are actually the two most important things that we can do to reform Congress. And uh, as a city councilman, mayor pro tem, I actually passed term limits on myself. Um, once we got political majority um, in, that, in that town, it was the very first thing we did. We, we advanced a term limit this initiative to our voters that we asked them to codify in a city charter um, because I, my entire goal there was to reform 
the city government and then walk away because I, I just don't believe that public service should be a lifetime career occupation that enriches politicians or their, or their children, which is precisely what's going on here, by the way, in this district. And as far as the tax cut situation, uh, we've heard Democrats say they want to take away the uh, uh, Trump tax cuts. Uh, where are you on that? That would, would make them permanent, of course. And, uh, and, and, by, and I support a and I support a flat a flat tax or a, or a fair tax as well. I mean, I I would still fundamentally overhaul the entire American tax system. Uh, you mentioned your record as a uh, councilman. You've seen uh, one of the ads has knocked you for increasing property tax. It's nonsense. I mean, it's the data is very clear. We reduce property taxes. Um, we reduce. We, in fact, I think the, the 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 rate reduction we had in the year that. You know, we, that I did, you know, end up in the political majority was maybe, possibly, we were trying to, we, we've gone back a long way, but I just can't say certainly, you know, over a long period of time, the first tax rate cut in city history. And look, I mean, this is, this, this is, Mr. Granger's, you know, running these, you know, completely false negative attack ads right now for a very specific reason. I mean, she's behind and she needs to change the channel. She doesn't want to talk about her big government record and tripling the size of the federal government. She doesn't want to talk about, you know, the $23 trillion of debt, that, you know, that she's put on the back of our children and grandchildren. And so that's the reason, you know, th that they're, they're doing these things. I wanted to ask, aside from the legislative priorities, is there anything that if you were to be elected that you would want to accomplish for District 12? Yeah, absolutely. By the way, you know, again, so I have a 30-year background, senior executive in the technology industry, um, in business development. I sat in the boardrooms of some of the largest corporations in the world, um, all over the world. And I, I mean, I believe that I am absolutely the best guy for this job, despite her 24 years in the house. You know, again, we talked about the fact that, you know, she's actually hurting our area right now and not helping um, with respect to the F-35 and respect to what's going on with Panther Island. And so, I, you know, I, I, I want to bring jobs here. And I, I come from an industry where we do not have a lot of tech jobs, you know, in this area. And, and I, I, I have access to that ecosystem, that network. I understand it well, you know, and, and of course, I have a proven history of, of creating jobs. And so I, that's going to be a, a huge focus of mine. I, I am, I will absolutely determine that, or, and I believe that, you know, I am by far the best person to take care of this area from that point of view. Chris Putnam, thank you so much. Appreciate your time.